One Hen by Katie Smith Milway. Kojo tugs the knot tight and hoists a bundle of firewood onto his head. Since his father died, he has had to quit school and help his mother collect wood to sell at the market. It's the last load of the day, and he is tired and hungry. Kojo and his mother live in a mud-walled house with an open fire for cooking. Beside it is a garden where they grow their own food. They have never have much money or much to eat. As Kojo nears the house, he can smell his mother's fufu cooking, their main meal made from cassava and yams. He begins to walk faster. Kojo and his mother live in a village in the Ashanti region of Ghana. None of the 20 families in the village have very much money, but they do have a good idea. Each family promises to save a bit of money so that one family can borrow all the savings to buy something important. The Achempong family is among the first to borrow the money. They use it to buy two cartloads of fruit, which they can sell for a profit at the market. When they pay back the loan, the Duo Du family borrows the money to buy a second-hand sewing machine. They plan to turn the cloth they were weaving into shirts and dresses to sell. One day, it is Kojo's mother's turn. She uses the loan to buy a cart so she can carry more firewood to the market. She also hopes to rent the cart to people who need transport. There are a few coins left over. Kojo asks if he can have them to buy something for himself. He has a good idea too. Kojo's idea is to buy a hen. He and his mother will eat some of the eggs it lays and sell the rest at the market. There is a farmer in a neighboring village with many hens, and Kojo will ask to buy one. It takes Kojo two hours to walk to the chicken farm. By the time he arrives, he is hot and dusty. He wonders how he will know which hen to choose. There are so many! Kojo tries to look over all the chickens. A white one pecks the ground near his foot. Should he choose this hen? A speckled one flaps her wings and clucks. Perhaps she is the one? All at once, Kojo spies a plump brown hen with a bright red comb sitting in her nest and puffing her, out her feathers. She looks as if she would enjoy laying eggs. Now he doesn't have to think. He knows in his heart that she is the one. Kojo pays for the brown hen and puts her in a wicker basket. He gently covers the hen with a cloth and lifts the basket onto his head. As he walks home, he dreams about the future, and he sees a lot of eggs in it. Eggs to eat and, if he is lucky, eggs that he can sell to buy more hens. That night, he puts the basket with the hen beside his bed mat to keep it safe. Kojo makes a nest for his hen from an old wash powder box and checks it for eggs every day. On the first day, he finds nothing. On the second, Still no. But what is this? In the corner under some straw, a smooth brown egg. Kojo is lucky indeed. His hen does seem to enjoy laying eggs. She lays five eggs the first week. Kojo and his mother eat one egg apiece, and he saves the other three for the market on Saturday. On market day, he walks among the stalls of fruit, vegetables, meats, kente clothes, and calabash bowls. He finds a good place to set down his small basket and call out for customers. Kojo sells two eggs to Ma Achimpong and one to Ma Duodu. He clutches his egg money tightly so he won't lose it. He is about to pack up his basket and go home when he finds another treasure, loose grains and bits of, fallen, of fruit fallen from the ground that can feed his hen. Slowly, slowly, Kojo's egg money grows. After two months, he saves enough to pay his mother back. In four months, he has enough to buy another hen. Now Kojo can sell five eggs a week, and he and his mother have more to eat. After six months, he buys a third hen, and he and his mother have an egg a day. Kojo is proud of his eggs, but his mother is proud of Kojo. Bit by bit, one small hen is making a big difference. One year later, Kojo has built up his flock to 25 hens. He thinks the sound of chickens clucking and skittering about their enclosures is better than the beating of festival drums. 
But collecting eggs for so many hens is hard work. His speckled hen tries to hide her eggs. Today he finds one under a cassava plant, and his white hens peck at him when he checks their nests. Then there is his brown hen with a bright red comb, his first and still favorite. She always seems to have a smooth brown egg for him. Selling eggs at the market has given Kojo some savings. Maybe he will use his egg money to build a fine wooden chicken coop. Maybe he will buy some things his mother needs, such as a new water bucket and a good knife. Or maybe he can pay for something he's been dreaming of. Fees and a uniform so he can go back to school. Your eggs have made a stronger Kojo, says his mother. Now go to school and learn. For both of us. Kojo's uniform feels stiff and new as he walks to school. With each step, his lips move silently, reciting the ABCs and numbers he learned before his father died. In school, Kojo works hard to catch up with other students on reading and spelling and arithmetic. Later, he learns to write essays and solve math and science problems. And he learns about his country's history and its resources and about other countries in Africa and around the world. There are practical lessons for country life too. How to filter drinking water with a cloth to remove parasites, how to use chicken manure and compost from garbage to fertilize soil and grow vegetables. The lessons Kojo learns help him care for his chickens. His dreams are growing bigger, but now he sees that he will need more education to make them come true. Kojo studies even harder and wins the scholarship to go to an agricultural college to learn more about farming. His mother will care for his chickens while he is away. At college, Kojo's dream starts to take shape, the shape of a farm of his own. After Kojo finishes college, he decides to take a big risk. He will use all the money he and his mother have saved to start a real poultry farm. He buys a large plot of land and enough wood and wire to build chicken coops. Now he needs hens, 900 of them, to start the farm. He needs another loan, and a big one. This time, Kojo goes to a bank in Kumasi, a nearby town. When the banker hears that Kojo wants to buy 900 hens, he shakes his head. He does not want to lend money to a young man from a poor family. Kojo does not give up. He goes to the capital city, Accra, and visits the bank's headquarters. Kojo waits and waits to see the bank president. The bank is nearly closing when, finally, the president agrees to see him. But not for long. He is a busy man. Kojo tells the banker that he has schooling and will work hard. The banker has heard such stories before and frowns. Then Kojo tells him about the small loan and the brown head and the egg money he has used to build his flock. The banker sits back in his chair. He taps his fingers together. This is not a story he hears every day. He smiles and nods. Kojo will get his loan. The banker and Kojo shake hands. Back home, Kojo buys his hens. Soon there will be eggs. So many eggs that he will need helpers to collect them all. Kojo's hens are good layers. There are more than enough eggs for his village, so he travels to Kumasi to sell to the shopkeepers there. One shopkeeper is called Lumo. Kojo knows him well. This man grew up in the same village that Kojo's father did and was his good friend. Kojo always goes to Lumo's shop last and sometimes stays for supper. He likes to hear stories about his father, and he likes the peanut stew and palm oil soup that Lumo's daughter makes. Her name is Lumusi, and she is a teacher. She has many stories about boys just like Kojo once was, boys who want to learn and who have big dreams. Kojo loves these stories, and he visits more and more often. He wishes he could hear Lumusi's stories every day. One day, he asks if she will be his wife. Lumusi is proud to marry Kojo and join him on the farm. Soon, Kojo and Lumusi are to be parents. As the years go by, they have three boys and two girls, all strong and clever. With the money from Kojo's eggs, they build a bigger house of cinder blocks and stucco. Kojo's mother comes to live with them, and they tend the garden. She will never have to sell firewood again. Before long, many people are working on Kojo's farm. Men come to feed the chickens and clean the coops. Women collect the eggs and pack them in boxes. 
Still other workers drive the eggs to markets in Kumasi and Accra. The workers have families. In all, 120 people depend on the wages from Kojo's farm. Families like the Odonkors have enough food to eat and money for their children's school fees. Ma Odonkor can buy medicine when her daughter Adika feels ill. Pa Odonkor can rebuild the walls of their mud home with cinder blocks and buy wood stamped Adinkra cloths for special occasions. The workers on Kojo's farm can even afford livestock of their own. Some families buy a goat, others a sheep, and some start with one brown hen. Kojo's farm is now the largest in Ghana, and his town has grown too. Some people come to find jobs on the farm and build homes for their families. Others come to the town to open shops and sell wares to the workers. One day, as Kojo tallies the accounts, he hears a knock at the door. Adika Odonkor, all grown up, is there. She greets Kojo and then holds out a small sack of coins. She tells Kojo that she has saved her wages. With just a bit more, she says she could buy a mechanical grain mill and start a small business helping families turn their grain into flour. Would it be possible to have a small loan? Kojo knows Adika's family well. They have worked on the farm many years. He likes this idea, but he makes Adika promise that one day she will loan money to another family. Adika agrees bit by bit as one person helps another. The lives of many families in this town improve, and so do the lives of their children. More children have enough to eat, more children go to school, and more children are healthy. As the years pass, Kojo's poultry farm becomes the largest in all of West Africa. He is now older and a proud grandfather. His children, grandchildren often visit and help collect eggs. Where will this one go, they asked, and that one? To Bamako and Mali, Kojo replies, or to Uagadugu in Burkina Faso. Kojo's workers pack thousands of eggs a day. And Kojo feels proud each time an egg truck pulls away to take food to families in neighboring countries. By now, Kojo has paid many taxes to the government of Ghana. So have his workers and the shopkeepers who sell his eggs. The government uses the tax money to build roads, schools, and health clinics across the country. It uses the money to improve the port at Accra, where ships from many countries come to trade. One more egg truck drives away, and Kojo looks down at his youngest grandson. The next time the boy asks Kojo where an egg will go, Kojo will say, to your future, my child. This is the way that one young boy named Kojo, with one small loan to buy one brown hen, eventually changed the lives of his family, his community, his town, and his country. It all started with a good idea and a small loan that made it come true. It all started with one hen. This is the story of Kwabina Darko, a real boy from Ghana's Ashtani, Ash, Ashanti region who really did lose his father and have to help his mother support his family. Kwabina was born to poor parents who lived in a small town not far from Kumasi in central Ghana. He lost his father at an early age and had to start buying and selling things to pay for his school fees and help his family. Sometimes Kwabina's family did not know where the next meal would come from. When Kwabina's mother carried a man with a small, married a man with a small chicken farm, Kwabina learned how to care for hens. He won a scholarship to study poultry science at a college in Israel and returned to Ghana to hone his farming skills. In 1967, he invested his life savings, less than $1,000, in land and chickens. Like Kojo, he needed a loan, and he, too, had a struggle to convince the bank to lend him money. Kwabina's business began to flourish. As he became successful, he never forgot how important it was to make loans available to people who wanted to start their own businesses, and he knew that banks were nervous about such loans. So he decided to start Sinapi Abba Mustard Seed Trust to give out loans. The loans were small, only about $200 each, but they made a big difference. 
In 2006, Sinapi Aba provided loans to more than 50,000 Ghanaians, mostly for small businesses such as selling fruit or selling fruit or firewood, sewing clothes, baking snacks, transporting goods, or raising small livestock like the hen that Kojo brought, bought. A loan from Sinapi Aba is made to a group of people. Each member receives a small loan of money, uses it to make more money, and then pays it back. The whole group ensures that the loan is repaid each time. About 90% of people who receive loans are women like Kojo's mother. Today, Sinapi Aba is part of the global microfinance nonprofit organization Opportunity International. And Kwabina Darko sits on the board of directors. I often tell people that when I was young and struggling, somebody gave me a chance, says Kwabina. All I want to do now is be part of something that gives young people the same break I received.